We are out in the greenhouse having a spot of breakfast. I've just watered all of my trees and Ali has made us a bacon and cranberry sauce with cream cheese and a coffee as well. Whilst I've been watering these, I have noticed that I've got these really funny, ooh, fly. Um, I don't know if you can see that white dot. Can you see that? There's like these white things on the, the leaves. Can you see that? Just there. And they're on all of the trees at the moment and I'm wondering if they are finishing them off. So um, I'm gonna have to go in search of something to treat the trees, I think, and find out what they are. We have had the most wonderful morning. Started off the day with a dog walk. I then cleaned my greenhouse and Ali is currently down at the bees taking our first harvest of honey. I am just about to sterilize some more jars because there is so much honey coming. So <laughs> this is our first Mill and Gordon uh, honey harvest. Ali became a certified beekeeper during lockdown. He did the full course and he knows absolutely everything about beekeeping pretty much. And today is our first harvest day. So I am currently um, sterilizing these jars. He's said on the voice note, he's like, they look a bit dirty, these are brand new jars. Um, but I'm gonna put them in the oven to sterilize them and get them ready for some more honey because he has already filled up three huge jars. I honestly, I can't believe that this is actually, I can't believe this day has come. I'm so excited. So give these a good clean. Get the oven going. Oh my gosh, I'm sapping so much. So exciting. So, oven is on. I look like a scrot. <laughs> but I'm gonna get them sterilized and then head down to have a look at the bees myself. Come on, sausages. Let's go and see our other pets. Mr. Millen Gordon is deep in the undergrowth. A little bit windy out here today, but we are taking a stroll down Honeybee Walk. As you can see, you can see the Millen Gordon bees inside and our honey coming out. Apologies for the wind. It's a blustery day, but this is a very, very exciting end to summer. Wow. A proper good morning to you now. Oh my goodness, what a wild morning. And I love that I think that um, our bees finally giving us honey is a wild morning, but it really is when I think that you've invested the time and energy that Ali has into this and the whole reasons why we started doing this, A, for the garden, B, for obviously a hobby that he was very much interested in, but also the produce that comes with it. We haven't had produce for two years. This was supposed to be the first year that we had it, and I was thinking that we weren't gonna have um, any honey, and I have, like, I, I actually might cry, because Annie goes, go on, taste it, and I was like, have you tasted it yet? And he was like, no. And I was sort of a bit worried, and so I like put my finger under and I tasted it. It is the most beautiful tasting honey I have ever tasted in my life. Like, and I mean that with every, <laughs> excessively, but every ounce of my being. It's like, it doesn't taste like normal honey at all. I feel like normal honey almost has that sickly sweet edge to it, whereas this is like, floral and natural but with that sort of element of sweetness as well I have never in my life ever tasted anything as beautiful as this and genuinely I don't think Ali believed me I was like he was like are you joking I was like hey I'm serious I, I feel like we're gonna be rich <laughs> no but genuinely it is phenomenal I'm actually probably gonna make myself some porridge and have some honey on my porridge for lunch because I, I can't wait and I just want to I want to have that warmy lovely goodness um, but a bit of a catch up my gosh I feel like I have not picked up my camera for such a long time it's so weird how I always say this but it's so weird how much of life passes by 
um, that doesn't happen in vlogs, which is so weird. But basically, um, what did I do last week? Um, last week, I can't remember. I have to get my diary. <laughs> Obviously, you saw in my last video that I had my caramelin shoot. I think that was my last video. I hope that was my last video. Today is the start of the autumn vlogs, basically, and I've actually picked up my camera previously and I've just not continued vlogging, so today is, is the day. Today is the day, and there is definitely a new freshness in the air. Um, now, I find this time of year probably the most exciting. I think the transitional seasons, I've mentioned it before, are my favourite seasons because you get this kind of merge merging of two seasons where you get these eruptions of colour. In springtime it's very like, you know, blues, pinks, whites, whatever, pinks, reds, yellows. Whereas at this time of year the eruption of colour is more in those ambery tones, whereas the leaves turn over and it just, everything goes brown and warm and red and the, the sun rises and sunsets. It is a real eruption of warmth at this time of year and I get very excited. So people get very annoyed at me because I say autumn, autumnal a lot. I'm gonna manage expectations that nothing is gonna change. <laughs> I am literally gonna say it probably even more because I wasn't aware that I used to be so in tune with seasons and now I am like, the seasons are the beating heart of my life which is the saddest thing I think I will ever say, but genuinely the joy that they bring my everyday life is something different. So it is gonna be a very autumnal month ahead of us, and so I wanted, I wanted to start off on a high, basically. So there's lots planned, and actually I have some really exciting things coming up. I think next week is gonna be probably the most exciting week of all. Um, this week I have my autumn decor in store, and I have literally been sending Gemma like so much inspo, it's unbelievable. And I'm doing something very different to what I did last year. We'll still have a lot of like potted ferns and things like that, but just little ones, I think. Um, we've also got other bits and pieces as well to go in, but I'm mainly focusing again on reflecting the land that's, that surrounds our home. So a lot of dry, dried wildflower, a lot of dried crops, um, and things like that, and we're gonna bring that inside. I know I mentioned pampas grass, obviously, I hope I didn't offend anyone, I would never mean to offend anyone, it's always just, in, in terms of my personal taste, things have changed quite a lot, as you do with age. But, um, yes, so my install is happening on Thursday, which I'm really, really excited about. We actually have um, a fragrance campaign that we're shooting this week as well, which may end up with us heading to the coast to shoot a little something but we're basically what we're going to do is we're going to organize a date day for Ali and I and we are just going to film it and make it really lovely. Gone are the days when I used to stress over campaigns in this capacity. I really just want to enjoy every part of everything so if we get to go to the coast hopefully you guys will come with us. Um, also coming up I believe um, this week or potentially next next week is the garden um, project starting at the house, which is exciting for us. I'm looking forward to this so much. I promise there's gonna be no moaning from me either, like I used to. I was talking to Ali on our dog walk today and just explaining to him like how I've changed so much in such a short space of time because I used to just want the end result and now obviously I'm excited for the end result but I'm also really looking forward to it coming together and seeing the changes. We've got some really lovely things planned for the garden and I just think it's gonna look so, so perfect. And as I mentioned, our patio is falling to bits anyway, so yeah. We're waiting for the final designs of our outdoor kitchen to come in and we're also trying to decide whether to go for a stone worktop, otherwise I really quite like the idea of a zinc, uh, a zinc worktop that's kind of got like rivets and stuff. We're going very like Soho farmhouse vibes down there. Sorry, I keep touching my hair, but it's freshly washed and I can see it looking quite big and floofy in the, um, <laughs> in the viewfinder. But um, yes, so lots happening there. Hopefully uh, things are just, I get very excited about these projects and we've also been talking about things around the house. I can show you what's, well, I can talk you through what's happening soon in Ali's office and just lots of stuff. But I did do some autumn shopping as well. And so I thought 
I don't know whether to do it. Maybe I'll do it now. I'll get everything open and then do some cutaways for you guys to see what I ordered. Basically, I did a My Teresa haul and um, I thought that we could jump into the boxes and see what I ordered, basically. I don't know if I'm going to keep everything, but we're, we will find out, basically. And then after that, I'm going to go and check on my husband because he's been down at the beach for a very, very long time and I'm starting to worry just a little bit. So, um, this on my dressing table is a roll of frosted sticker because I have these very annoying little uh, Ujimi flips that cover the um, windows in my dressing room so that I don't get harsh light. They're falling apart, but also they make a hell of a racket. So I ordered this on Amazon. You basically just swipe it onto the thing and it frosts the glass because I don't need um, them to be fully open. I have this one fully open because it doesn't actually get a lot of direct sun coming through. But, anywho, do we have scissors? You never find them when you need them. And I'm sure I always put them back in this pot. Uh -huh. I see scissors and wizards and light. What is the huh? Okay, so I ordered some Alame dresses that looked quite autumnal with this kind of orange, orange harvest feeling dress. This could be quite lovely um, for this time of year. It's also got elasticated cuffs um, and a high neck, which I love. Not sure about the rope belt. I've probably changed that out for something else, something a little bit uh, nicer. But Alame is such a beautiful brand. So I thought that I would try some of their autumn stuff. Nice long sleeve pieces. Okay, so this is the first Alame dress on. It has got pockets, um, and I actually think that I prefer the colours on more than I thought I was going to, because um, it does feel very, very autumnal, which I really, really like. Um, I'm not sure about the length, though, because if I was going to wear this in autumn, winter, I'd want to wear it with these particular shoes, most likely, or my boots. But if I was going to wear it with these, um, I would probably want a bit more coverage on my legs, I'm not sure, but this is sort of how I would style it up. But the good thing about long sleeve dresses in winter is you can get cashmere base layers from um, Intimissimi and they fit perfectly underneath dresses so that you're not bulky but you're still kept really warm. I'll link them in the description box down below. I'm about to stock up so um, I would suggest that you do too because they are absolutely game changing. They're super fine, they're very see-through, they're not meant as like a top, they're meant as a base layer to keep you warm, um, to be worn under things. But let me know what you think because I don't know if I would have sent this stuff back yet so let me know in the comments whether you like this one. Um, next up we have another, another anime dress. Um, I don't think I'll keep this one, I'm not sure, you have to let me know what you think because it's quite colourful. And I'm not sure if it's very me. It's got quite a lot of colours on it. Um, so it's got like a um, purple paisley, a pink paisley, a brown paisley, and I think that's it. But I think maybe it's a bit much for me. I'm not too sure. Seeing it in person, I'm like, I love the fabric. It's a nice linen-y fabric, but um, not sure. Okay, this is the other Alame dress, and I've styled it up with some pink pointed flats and a pink dual bag as well. I can't get my words out today. Um, these are so massive for me now. I wonder if my feet have shrunk. How bizarre. Um, but the dress, again, I put it on and it just doesn't make me feel amazing, but I really like the sort of top half of it, but it's got this kind of drop waist detail, which I'm just not sure is... Like, it just looks like it's not supposed to be cinched in at the waist, and actually they wanted it cinched in there. I'm not too sure about it. Um, but the sleeves, like I said, really, really lovely. And the pattern is beautiful, but I think it just feels a little bit too busy for me. Let me know in the comments, though, because there is still time. You could change my mind. Ooh. So next up is a crop top from... Ooh, I did not think that this was that. So this is VB Body, but it just said Victoria Beckham on the internet, on the internet, on the website. Interesting. So it's kind of like a sort of uh, knitted crop top, 
but I liked it because it had a square neckline and I thought this was like skirts, but also layering pieces like under shirts and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, okay, so it's, a, it's more of like a, is it more of like an underwear thing? I don't know, but I, I got this in quite a few colours. Well, something a little bit more going outy perhaps, and maybe I would want a cardigan or a blazer over the top to keep me warm in autumn, winter, but um, I am going to say it here, I am definitely more of a VB body type of girl than I am a Skims type of girl. This is amazing, like genuinely amazing. Exactly the type of neckline that I love. I live in square neckline. I find it the most flattering on me, especially now I can wear necklines like this, I think. Um, so I'm gonna keep every color. I think I might actually order some more white ones because I think next year I will definitely get the wear out of them as well. It fits such a dream. I actually can't cope. Such a great basic for just pairing with things. If you need a, like a basic, elegant neckline top, it doesn't look like sportswear, it doesn't look like shapewear, it doesn't feel like shapewear, but it contours the body perfectly in the exact way that I want it. So chef's kiss. I'm not gonna try on the chocolate and the white because I've just tried to, to start up the chocolate and I'm not quite 100% on it yet. I'm gonna keep it, but I'm not quite 100% on it. White, obviously, it's um, self-explanatory. It will be great under shirts as a crop top, um, something to add a little bit more like layers, especially in summertime. Obviously, we're not shopping for summer, but I, I'm literally gonna go straight away and look at more from uh, VB Body because this is a dream. I paired it with my Amazon skirt, Aquazura, heels and my Louis Vuitton Petite Mal, which is always a great for the winter season. I just wear this so much. It always adds a little bit of attitude and I feel like I'm carrying around some of my, like, well, some of my pieces that I just love so much are obviously my trunks and my luggage from Louis Vuitton. Obviously I can't wear them. So this feels like I get to take a little bit of my collection with me. Um, so yeah, love this. And then some other bits from uh, Victoria Beckham, which these aren't, yeah, so these are Victoria Beckham. And I honestly thought that this was brilliant for autumn, winter. And I shared this on my Instagram stories, but this is a bodysuit, so a knitted bodysuit with nice long cuffs, slightly blue on sleeves, a collar, and a, oh, can you wear it either way? I think you can wear it either, oh no, so it, no, that's the back. Yes, yeah, so it's got kind of peephole detailing at the back, but I thought this with skirts and things like that, I think would work really nicely. And it came in two colors. I also loved the, are these called, le pet, what are they called? Not lapels. You're probably screaming it at the screen at the moment. I can never, Eplets? I have no idea. Um, but they're kind of like a bit of a uh, military detailing that just doesn't go in and out of style. So I really liked that. And obviously, as you would have seen, I have paired the Victoria Beckham knitted bodysuit. I am obsessed. Um, epaulettes is what I was trying to say. Epaulettes. When it comes to autumn, winter, you often see coats and outerwear and things like that with epaulettes on the shoulders. So you can never really feel like you're going wrong with them, I would say. So the addition doesn't make this too defining and doesn't limit it when it comes to being a timeless piece. And I actually think that this is going to be a bit of a game changer when pairing with, with skirts and trousers. Because it's not a thong, you might struggle with jeans and um, things like that. But with skirts and trousers, I think I am going to get a hell of a lot of wear out of this. I am in love. I don't know what I did with my leg then. It's like, <laughs> it came in this wonderful taupe colour as well, which I think I will get a lot of wear out of. Knitted bodysuit, so you won't get the bulk around the waist. And I just thought that these were really, really good basics. Last from the past, but we're doing autumn winter outfits. This is a tall skirt that I got from Amazon last year. And um, I've popped it with the BB body, like knitted body just for a bit of something different, slightly longer skirt. Um, I always like to toughen these tall skirts up, but I find that they're a really good basic to have. Love this color. I've again teamed it with one of my Hermes bags. This is another autumn winter bag. Um, this is my Birkin 30. People forget that I had this, which is really weird because I actually did an Hermes come shopping with me for this particular bag. 
um, and you actually got to see me buying it, which is so weird. But anyway, um, this is my, it's like, it's the Cellier one, so it's slightly more structured. But I've also teamed it with boots, whereas I think I would go for some flat, black, pointed flats for autumn and then boots for winter. But I don't have any pointed, like, leather ones, so I need to go and search for some leather pointed flats. But yes, simple outfit, paired it with, paired it with my Alexander McQueen belt. This is super warm and just so great for throwing under things like this. And the epaulettes are a really nice design detail. I also love the collar. I am very, very happy with this. These are, and do you know what? I was a bit worried because people didn't really like them initially, but I think maybe that was because I said that I got both and they were like more expensive. But anyway, this is a good basic. If you've got the cash to be able to buy this like particular one, I'm sure there'll be some that come out um, on the high street, but this one is so flattering, so comfortable and so warm. Very happy with this. More of the VB body, so I got the white one as well, but I believe I got the brown. I did, here is the brown version, which I think this one, I will probably get a considerable amount of wear out of as well. I think that's gonna be a lovely, lovely layering piece for skirts. Speaking of skirts, I saw this from, where is this from? Alaya, and I think it might be a bit shorter than I had planned, but I really loved the sort of idea of this. I love the sort of belt detail. Um, and then this with like jumpers and things like that, I thought it could be quite lovely for autumn, winter. Um, but I don't know whether I can just achieve this look fairly simply, because this is quite expensive. I reckon I could probably get like a shirt dress and just achieve the same look. Who knows, we'll see. Okay, this is such an autumn winter outfit and you can see the first edition of my more wintry and autumny black bags. I don't tend to wear black bags so much in uh, summer. I generally go for richer tones because it adds more to the whites, um, but first edition of my black mini Kelly which matches the hardware on this skirt from Alaya. I actually really like it on. I think this is so nice on, and I paired it with um, a Victoria Beckham bodysuit, knitted bodysuit, which is so great for this. I feel like this is such a pairing, and it'd actually be really good for a trip that I've got coming up. Um, old season Le Bouton boots, and yeah, it's very small though. If you think, I've got like quite, I do have quite a small waist, and this was, <laughs> I mean, this is tight. I think the elastic is such good quality that it's like extra, extra tight, really kind of pulls you in. Perhaps I could go at a size up in this particular one, um, but I actually really like it. I do think you could recreate this look very easily, um, but I do really like the length of the skirt. It's not too short. So this massive box oh, from Johnston's of Elgin and Basically, you have seen that I received the scarf from their collaboration with Sabina Savage, which I genuinely cannot wait to wear. Where have I put my scissors now? Oh, for goodness sake, I have to do it with my fingers. If there is one thing that I love, it is beautiful quality knitwear. And I feel like there is no one better, really, than Johnston's of Elgin, because my goodness, their collection, Oh wow, oh, the boxes, I actually don't want to ruin the boxes because I quite like to open, <laughs> open them on a Instagram. Look at these boxes. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my goodness, oh wow, okay, this is, this is for Ali. They sent a monogram scarf for Ali. I feel really bad <laughs> that I've just opened that. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So this is a beautiful chocolate maxi cardigan. I pretty much live in maxi cardigans in uh, autumn, winter. And if you are on the hunt, I know lots of people always love my sort of blush toned one, but this one, Ooh, you can kind of have like three quarter sleeves of it. So this is very, very similar in style to the maxi cardigan that I always wear. And it has a rich chocolate tone to it. Beautiful pockets here, which is so handy. Wonderful lapels. And you will be pleased to know that this is 100% cashmere as well, which I think is an absolute essential when it comes to 
autumn winter because it keeps you so nice and warm. Belted like this, probably not with the blue, but belted, oh, the dream. Now, if ever there was an autumnal hued outfit, I think this one cinches the deal. This is the chocolate cardigan from Johnson's of Elgin. This is a maxi cardigan and I live in these in autumn winter, whether it's just around the house or whether it's like going somewhere, especially even in spring and summer. I feel like these are one of those unsung heroes that you don't know you need in your wardrobe, especially if you're someone that's cold like me. Um, they are perfect for taking with you, just slouched over your arm, they always look really elegant, but thrown on. You can obviously wear them kind of like a cotigan, like this, um, but you can also really sort of add it to the outfit as well by popping your belt as another layer, but you can obviously add the um, Sabino Savage like scarf to these as well. This comes in navy and in this chocolate color, and I promise you, you will get so much wear out of this. Even if I'm traveling, I take it because it's like a blanket as well, because it's so long. Um, you would have seen me wearing it on my caramel shoots and things like that. Then I also ordered this beautiful blush toned, it's almost like in between, blush and terracotta roll neck kind of boxy fit jumper nice open sleeves like that i thought that this would be such a good color and such a, a sort of easy piece to just throw on over sort of leggings or jeans or trousers just something to keep you nice and cozy and warm again this is also 100 percent cashmere so you'll be very very happy and cozy and warm in that Oh my goodness. And you know what? I don't have a scarf like this. A beautiful, rich, cherry red monogram scarf. What a beautiful gift that would make for Christmas. Oh my gosh. Not just mentioning the A word now. Now we're talking about Christmas. Oh, I love it. So this, I think that a lot of people will really, oh my gosh, this is even more gorgeous in real life. So this is a jumper dress, 100% cashmere jumper dress in navy blue. It nips in at the waist. I think that this is going to be an essential piece for any sort of classic lover's wardrobe in this beautiful, rich navy, nice fitted arms. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try this on. You just know that that is going to keep you so warm while still being really feminine. This is the thing I find a lot of the time with jumper dresses is they're quite obviously straight up and down. I want something that's still got that feminine touch to it. So, oh, I loved that. Do you know what? I'm just like, ah, so excited. Okay, this is a firm favorite. So this is the Johnsons of Elgin navy blue cashmere. This is 100% pure cashmere uh, jumper dress. This is my first ever jumper dress in this kind of shape and I need it in other colors. Imagine this in a classic cream or a camel. <gasps> wow. And it's so soft. I've not got anything on other than like obviously knickers um, underneath this. It is so soft on the skin. Really wonderful shape. I reckon I could steam these uh, pleats from where it was packaged out of the sides, but the other thing I love about this is I have the navy cashmere long line cardigan to match, and you can obviously belt it, but this is a pairing of dreams. Like This is like the most beautiful elevated workwear, comfortable, <gasps> oh, my goodness, I'm in love with this. Absolutely in love with this. What a dream outfit. Obviously you can change the belt, put whatever belt that this is. This is a dream. <gasps> wow. Before I tidy up this mess, um, just to let you know that my dress is from Amazon. It's a new find. Um, it looked more like denim dressy in the pictures but when it arrived it's a much more classic blue linen i've ordered it in the long sleeved as well um, but this is something that i've been wearing because it's slightly heavier in fabric it does feel like linen but it's another one that's really good for creasing i literally sat on the sofa last night and watched the new downton film and i was snuggled under a blanket i had the dogs on me Lumi on me ali on me and it still looks like this so very very good for creasing have you tried it yet so this one here, yeah. 
It's got loads of like dead legs and stuff. Like so I think we'll, you can get some straining paper. Okay. So you, I think we can strain that out um, because it's got loads of bits in it. It's not like crazy, but it's just enough. I bet you could just get that out. Well, yeah, you just need to get this paper. You just run it through. Oh, okay. Um, but have you tasted it? Yeah. How good does it taste? Yeah. Try it. Oh wow, that is unreal. It tastes pretty good. It's so, I'm gonna have porridge with that on it for lunch. <laughs> I am, I can't wait. Well, Ali is sticking the first <laughs> Mill and Gordon honey sticker onto the jar. There we go. First one done. As you can see, Mill and Gordon honey. Oh my gosh. Honestly. This is the best honey I've ever had. <laughs> it's so good. My first porridge of the season. Mm. So I was about to sit down here with you and basically go through like my autumn checklist because lots changes, beauty changes for me anyway, um, wardrobe changes, home changes, just bits and pieces like that to help me get through the season as like as easily as possible because I think that the autumn season starts out really magical. Like I was saying upstairs, it's very exciting and the the colder air coming in in the UK is really exciting but if you're not careful by the time you get past Christmas it can be quite a miserable time. I would say that January, February and March are my least favourite months of the year and it's important to ensure that everything is kind of that you're making little moments of excitement and joy so that when it gets to that point, because it usually is quite miserable, you've gone as long as possible really happy and excited for the seasons. So that's why I do it, I think. I genuinely think that that's why I live my life like this, because those moments in life where things are a little bit uncomfortable or they're not as lovely, hopefully everything I do around it makes those less so, if that makes sense. So anyway, I was gonna write down my list in my diary and I realized that I have actually pretty much finished my diary. So I've ordered a new one, I order, the Smithson Soho Diary, um, the one with the clasp, and this year's colour is navy. I think I've had the green, I've had the tan, I've had the beautiful chestnut colour, I've had two of those actually. So now I've got the navy, which is lovely. But instead I'm going to use my uh, Smithson notebook instead because I don't have anything to write in. So, where are we at? the 1st of September. Obviously you're watching this on the 1st of September, but I work a little bit in advance, don't I, so that you, we can do these things together. I made some notes on my phone, but for me writing things down, down is really important, so that is where I'm going to start. So, first things first is an autumn uh, decor refresh, so I add that to my list. So everything that will be kind of happening is we'll be swapping out the citrus trees because obviously the citrus trees are quite a summery thing um, and we're going to be obviously leaning into what is essentially surrounding the area. So we're going to have lots of bracken, um, dried teasels, things like that coming into the house as well. A um, little bit of a switch out in terms of like blankets. I've just um, cleared out the dog's blankets as well because they get through blankets quite quickly. They chew them. Um, so I've thrown some of those away and refreshed them with some lovely cosy wool blankets for the cosy season. Um, sometimes you can change out your art as well if you wanted to. You can obviously swap things over so that it's more seasonal, um, more spring, whatever, whatever works or more autumnal for this season. 
Obviously, you're probably gonna want to make an order of like firewood and things like that if you've got a fire at home, um, just for the cozy evenings. I'm obviously getting very excited. I will not allow myself to have a fire this year until it really kind of like dips lower into, um, I'd say 10, if it goes lower than 10 degrees or 12, 12 degrees, 10 degrees? if it goes lower than then maybe i'll be able to have a fire then but there's definitely like a change in the air at the moment so um also playlists i changed like my playlists and my home fragrances as well so um cozier candles probably things like air and amber musk as a candle anything that's kind of more ambery warm um you can get out like things like di uh, diptyque fer de bois it's still a very cozy candle sometimes i try and save it for for later on in the season but really um it's usually this sort of white company winter fragrance later on when we get to winter so I can kind of have, fu have fun with candles but I'm going to go in search of some new ones this year I think. I'm hoping that Beauty Pie is going to bring out a good one for the autumn season. So yes, uh, that is one of the things, well just a few of the things really, just lots of blankets, lots of cosy things. You can also swap out scatter cushions if you want something like to introduce different tones into a room. It's really good being in a room like this one because a lot of um, different colours go with the, the tones in here so the black just kind of complements everything. So if I wanted to swap out our green cushions for maybe something more like cognac in colour then I could do that as well. Um, if you fancy that kind of thing. I also make sure that my routine is, um, like my morning routine is possible when it's, when the, obviously the the um, clocks change here in the UK, I want my routine in the morning to still be um, as like effective and motivational. Um, I do use a Lumi alarm clock, or I think I have a Philips Hue and Ali has a Lumi one, but we both use them to make sure that we get up in the mornings when it's darker um, and don't feel too sluggish, that's for sure. Obviously, dog walks, getting outside as early as possible. The frosty dog walks are chef's kiss at this time of year. Like, if anything, I would say now is the time to get a dog because these mornings and the sunrises or the sunsets are the gift that keeps on giving, so it's a good time. I got Porter actually in January, which was very, very helpful because it made January very exciting. Obviously not this year. We got Barkley this year. Last year it was Porter. Was it last year or the year before? Porter's going to be two this year, so it's just the year before. So yeah, um, that's a really good thing to do as well. Obviously you can swap out your beauty for things that are more like, um, I go for slightly more taupey, richer nudes um, in that respect. I also step away from like coral blushes and um, I usually amp up my tanning a little bit as well so that I don't feel too sort of pale throughout the winter season, but there is nothing quite like a golden glow of summer to complement your um, fake tan. So yes, so routine, beauty swap out. Another thing that's good to do is if you're not like me and you don't do the job that I do, I would do like a seasonal swap out of my wardrobe because I travel a lot. Sorry if you can hear Ali making a massive racket in the other room. Um, this is married life for you. But what you can do is swap out your spring summer wardrobe and start working through that um, now as well. I obviously travel places so um, sometimes I can be somewhere hot even though it's winter. So I need to have access that's fairly easy to my um, spring summer wardrobe but if I could I would 110% pack down my spring summer wardrobe and I will also have a bit of a clear out in terms of items that can go maybe to rental places, items that can go to be sold and items that can go to charity. I don't do it as much anymore because um, I think I'm getting quite good at sorting through clothes and picking the good stuff basically but yes yeah, so that's a, a seasonal wardrobe sh swap out. Now obviously I've got my autumn decor later so we'll do a whole video on that um, very very soon. Um, another thing that you can do is your cleaning fragrances. I really like to have my house smelling clean but of like seasonal fragrances as well so there's lots of places where you can get really nice fragrances um, that complement the seasons and just make the whole vibe more kind of cosy but what I will do is I will basically put together I think maybe we could do a blog post on this so that I can link you to like playlists that I like um etc etc so that you can shop there shop or listen there whatever whatever we're linking to you do your thing 
you're probably also going to want to swap out your fragrance as well your own fragrance um, I swap out my body cream and my fragrance for something that's more autumnal as well um, like I said I like everything to be very very cozy and very lovely so those are just a few of the things on my autumn checklist that I thought I would let you kind of in on um, but like I said I'll put together a whole uh, blog post about it so that you guys can check that out and read it there as well. Yesterday I made, I think I might make it tonight as well, my stepmom brought me some figs from her garden, her and my dad's garden, and I ordered the ingredients to make another tart. So I did, basically, I'll link the recipe for this as well, but it's a, you put basil pesto on the base, then you add like beautiful torn bits of mozzarella, um, then figs, then some prosciutto, and um, you can add some balsamic glaze as well, and it is so nice. Ali, shall I make that for dinner? What we should get there? Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I'll or make that. It was lovely. Oh my gosh, babe. Honestly, yeah. I know what. When I opened the the thing, I can smell mm. the 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 beehive, but I can't taste it. So I think maybe you were just breathing in the smell when you first open it, yeah. um, because it is actually beautiful. Like I actually can't believe that, that our honey tastes that good. I've also just done an order from um, Amazon for some little jars so that we can like bottle up the honey for gifts and things like that. So I bought these jars and I got little tiny, um, what are they call dippers for the honey as well. Then I bought some fabric with just like some, nothing too expensive, but just some leafy fabric, some twine and bits and pieces like that so that we can make them really lovely, add sprigs to them, etc., etc., so that um, we can give them as gifts because we want to give some to our neighbors because obviously the bees will have been sampling their gardens to, to make our honey. So I think that would be quite nice as well. Isn't that right, Portellini? Mummy is in full autumn mode. Just came round the corner and Porter was obviously finishing off some work. Are you trying to pretend like you weren't? <laughs> okay, it is now dinner time and I am prepping yet another tart because I honestly am like obsessed. I can't believe it, I just found that one packet in my fridge, no, in my freezer. And I was like, oh, I've never used this before. Now I am fully obsessed with phyllo tart kind of recipes and just throwing things together. So yesterday I did a basil pesto uh, prosciutto and mozzarella and uh, figs. We're just kind of throwing something together today, kind of along the same lines as the recipe, but we're adding in some chicken because we had some chicken that we needed to use up. Butter chicken that Ali has done. But it's still gonna have the pesto base, mozzarella, figs, um, just kind of throwing it all together and then having some chips as well because I just fancied some chips and why not? Why not? I thought you'd say on wine then. I was like, oh, I'd that? love to have wine. Right, and you're uh, right, okay, thank you very much. This can now go in for 10 minutes. So I've laid out my ingredients. I've got the chicken. Obviously, Ali did the chicken for me because I have this weird phobia about doing meat. I just don't feel confident with it. So I've got some figs. These are from my parents' garden. Then some mozzarella. I actually only have one bag of mozzarella. I ordered four, but one of them um, wasn't right. So I've popped together just this one. So I'm gonna add in some cheddar potentially. I've got some feta. I don't know whether to do the feta or the cheddar, um, but the base is the organic basil, vegan ba basil pesto from Dalesford. Um, this was on my Ocado shop and then we'll probably drizzle some bits on top, some garnishes, what have you, but I am thoroughly enjoying pastry at the moment. I feel like it's an unsung hero of the dinner world. It's like literally pizza with whatever you want on top of it, but the base has, I believe it has no fat in it. So you obviously add fat um, if you want to, or if you like, obviously there's a lot of fat in this, um, but, it's just kind of like a really good base to start with. And I've got the gluten-free pastry as well. So yes, that's definitely an add to cart moment for uh, your food shop. Because again, with like, if you're growing any vegetables as well, I've just found one that's a um, courgette phyllo tart as well, which is kind of like a really, um, like it's like a filled tart, which I've never done before, but I definitely want to try something quite like I don't know, like hearty about it for the coming season, just adding loads of courgette and stuff like that, yeah. So that's one of the things I'm gonna do as well, but um, no, I'm really enjoying it.
I have been serving my tarts on my uh, serving dishes from every story and these are so perfect for that because you, I don't know if you, I'm sure you do know, they do kind of like scalloped um, baking things for tarts. I don't know what they're called, like baking trays, but this is like more of a rustic take on it. So it's all irregular, all really beautiful, but the tarts look so lovely, even if it's just cut into slices or what have you. Um, it just makes the display process very, very lovely, which is something that I'm obviously really enjoying at the moment. I've already started laying the table and I am very hungry. Well, I have piled the tart with mozzarella, figs and chicken. Um, we didn't need the cheddar because even though there wasn't enough mozzarella, it kind of has spread far enough so that I can fill in the gaps with figs and chicken, so it's all good. But now it's time to go in the oven for 10 minutes. I have gone for the fern print Bertioli napkins um, because they felt a little bit more autumnal, but I um, did notice on their Instagram, I think they've done a more autumnal oak leaf one, which I'm waiting for that to launch on their website so that I can buy it. But that is the table pretty much set and I can hear my wash load in the washing machine, which is my fresh dressing gowns, freshly cleaned for the week. Getting full use out of all of my different uh, napkins at the moment. Ever since I've started enjoying dressing the table and setting it every evening, they are always in use. One of the other things that I did over the weekend was I started painting my frames. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a while. These used to be sort of like a sort of like a downpipe colour, but I wanted to change that a little bit. So now they are um, Hornblend from Paint and Paper Library. Um, I did this small one first. This was a gift from Rob Walker, and he actually popped our initials into the woodwork of the piece. But I wanted to just incorporate it into our decor a little bit more. So I'm gonna do the big one in, well, hopefully next week if I get time. Well, it's a bit of a throw it all together, but it looks delicious. This little munchkin doesn't often join me on the sofa, but this evening he's decided that Sitting with mummy is better than sitting under the sofa. Although the one thing that we've realised is obviously he can't jump up on the sofas, whereas Porter can. Um, so I've ordered him a little jute puff so that he can jump up by himself, hopefully. You know, we're talking about you. Don't pretend that like you're not. Also, whoever said that Porter is Dobby in my uh, last video Oh my goodness, you have no idea how long I have been trying to find what that creature is called. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, so I've never really been into it. I didn't know that that was Dobby, but I'd seen pictures of Dobby on the internet. And so when Barkley came to us um, and his ears would be back, I was like, oh, what is that like gargoyle thing that has like the ears and the face? And I just didn't know. And then miraculously, one of you comments on my video, oh, uh, Barkley looks like Dobby. I was like, Dobby, Dobby, Googled it. I was like, oh, yes. I've like literally sent it to everyone in my family now. I'm like, this is Barkley. In fact, I'm gonna put a picture of Dobby and a picture of Barkley. <laughs> and they are one person in one gargoyle. Here you go. We also had probably one of the best dog walks that we've ever had uh, this morning. Um, one of the things that I get really lax with is um, incentivizing the boys on walks because I'm so busy enjoying the walks. I forget that they need to be incentivized and stimulated sometimes. So um, I've started bringing their toys and I got them some very, very special treats. Unfortunately, Porter's not really into fish that much, but Barkley will just eat anything. So I got them these little sort of like, they're like roasted fish things. They kind of look like sardines. And then I got Porter some little sausage thing and I cut it up into little bits and I give them those. But yes, we had a very, very well-behaved walk. 
today. I was very happy. But as you can see, it is a cozy and chilled evening on the sofa. I haven't lit the fire, but there is a real chill in the air. I walked to the greenhouse without a jumper on and I was like, oh my God, it's so cold. <laughs> so it's not far off. And I've also just been on TikTok and I sent Ali a picture. There's a garden designer that we love called Polly Anna or Polly Ann, Polly Anna Wilkinson or something like that. And um, she's amazing. Obviously we've got our garden starting soon and she just put this up. So those trees, we're going to have four of those trees that will act like natural canopies in our garden. And I am so excited because we won't have any sort of need for parasols because we'll have beautiful dappled light. We actually sat underneath one of them at Nicholson's and the light and the shade from it was just beautiful. So we're having those actually built into the terrace and I am very, very excited to start this project. Anyway, I'm going to snuggle this one for a little bit because I feel very spoiled having him on my lap and get cosy on the sofa. I've also just downloaded a new a new book. It's a, on pre-order. It's the new James Smith PT book. Um, to be honest, I didn't really like him to begin with, but now I really like him. <laughs> He's like very um, to the point and interesting and I just like how he doesn't fluff things up in his content so I've downloaded his well I haven't downloaded it I've pre-ordered it on audible because it seems like it might be quite interesting I listened to the first chapter on his TikTok which I thought was quite a nice touch really a good way to um hook people in well this is Barkley currently he definitely decided that he didn't want to go under the sofa today he is schnoot Oh my gosh, I can see right into the snoot. But we were also joined by this little sausage. It is an absolute cuddle sausage fest. But it's time for bed. And I've just finished up my skincare routine and I've popped on some fresh pyjamas. Oh, um, basically my treatment of the evening is the Dr. Glycolic Poor purifying glow toner and then this one always makes people really stroppy but I've gone in with the Clé de Polar Creme. I bought this a good few months ago and I hadn't opened it and I thought my skin is a little bit sensitive and temperamental at the moment so I'm going to give it a good seeing to basically this evening. I used it last night um, and my skin feels really lovely so now I just need to keep keep on at it basically but I'm having a break from my skin and me and just using kind of a mix really I'm not just going in for all of the high-end skincare I'm going in for the beauty pie um but I am going to get some lip balm on my lips and get into bed and write down some notes set my alarm and start the day